other than be healthy. Take care of the family, you know what I'm saying? Like you. You're a family man. Good. Good family man. Good. Make sure my family, you know, pray. Yeah. Oh, that's it. Is that you on the recording? It is. And at what part of the recording are we listening to? This is actually getting into my Ford Taurus, my take home car. All right. And what we're going to do actually just do you get in the car and take him to headquarters? We do. All right. I do. Okay. If you would have blinked twice, you would have missed it. Watch. Take care of the family, you know what I'm saying? Like you. You're a family man. Good family man. Good. Make sure my family, you know, pray. Yeah. Oh, that's it. Is that you on the recording? It is. And at what part of the recording are we listening to? This is actually getting into my Ford Taurus, my take home car. All right. And what we're going to do actually just do you get in the car and take him to headquarters? We do. All right. I do. Okay. You didn't catch it, but watch this. I'm going to let Detective David Quinn explain exactly what he's doing. And then I'm going to run a clip that's probably less than two minutes where he does exactly what he's talking about, master manipulation. I'll never know why the jury didn't convict, but they didn't. But it made me understand I had to get better. The lieutenant walked over to my desk. Everybody was crowded around. Here's your first homicide, Quinn. This brother got shot here in Atlanta, was up in Grady Hospital for about 11 days, the ambulance to transport his brother from the scene, for whatever reason, they didn't call the police because they had done some errors on the transport. They didn't see the brother was shot. Grady Hospital released the victim too early. He was only 11 days. He had five gunshots. He was grabbing nurses in the hospital, and so they got him up out of there. They just pushed him onto a bus. So the two chest tubes down in him, sitting here, you know, the blood, you know, collecting in him. He went into full arrest uh, halfway through the trip. He just died. It took about six months to put all the evidence together to understand this was a homicide. And I found out from the 911 call, I listened to the tape, and it was a sister at a trap house dialing 911 for somebody shot. So I went up there to the trap house, because I got to find the sister that called it in. I saw the little screen door had a hole in it. I said, I'm gonna go in here and uh, I'm gonna wait till sisters come up to try to get served. And I'm gonna take them back, I'm gonna interview them, and I'm gonna play their voice against the tape I had. And that's exactly what happened. If you're afraid of bullets as a cop, you're not gonna get anything done. If you're afraid of the street, the people you serve, you're not gonna get anything done. And here's the crushing part of that whole case. I put all that together. The person was found not guilty. I had procedure in my head when we went to trial. I met the prosecutor at the trial, which is never good. I never looked at the jury on that first trial. I looked straight ahead. I was a young homicide detective. I knew everything about the street, but I had never really been to trial. I mean, you don't go to trials as a patrolman. You lock them, tag them, bag them, it's over. I decided I would never, ever, ever put a case up for prosecution without getting inside that jury box. That was my life. So I gave the jury a piece of me. And after that, I never commits. Excuse me, when Detective Lewis and Detective Calhoun spoke with Murphy and Prothro, did they provide you a report about their conversation or interactions with both Prothro and Murphy? Yeah, they both gave me some written documentation as well. All right. So let me ask you this. Um, I think you testified earlier that you may have been aware of Adrian being going down to Grady. When you first got on scene, who did you know definitely went down to Grady Hospital? Uh, Walter Murphy and Frederick Propra. All right. At that time, had you had any information about Adrian being going down to Grady Hospital? Your Honor, ambiguous question at that time. I can uh, clarify. I'll, uh, I'll sustain the question as a form, and, I'll ref and you can rephrase it now. When you got to the scene on September 11, 2013, 
Did you have any information that Adrian Bean had went down to Grady Hospital? I didn't. Okay. You said you did not? I didn't, know. Okay. As the day progressed and you were interviewing um, Flora, Nava Flores, Brian Ransom, going to all the different scenes, did you receive any information of Adrian Bean going down to Grady Hospital? I, I got information that he had gone in, but he had also gone to jail. Okay. And did you ever send anyone down to Grady specifically to speak to Adrian B? Not at all. <clears throat> to your knowledge, did any of the zone detectives or sergeants with zone three ever go down to Grady Hospital and speak with Adrian B? Not at all. Nothing was reported back to me. And would you, if that would have occurred, would you be the person it would come back to? Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty much running the show. But they had to bring it to me. 47. Prior to this call, or hearing any of these calls, have you taken out any warrants on anyone in this case? No. Okay. And before hearing the entirety of this call, did you have any awareness of who the driver was of this red Nissan? It was still a mystery. So, when was the first time that you learned that Adrian B was the driver of this vehicle? When I checked him out of jail. Okay. Did you hear him talk about it well, with any jail calls? Yes, ma'am. So I listened to jail call, which caused me to go check him out of jail. I wanted to hear it from him personally. Okay. All right. Your Honor, the state's ready to play. So this is what I hope. And, and, and Brian Stillman is watching this. Let Adams do this. Somebody has to fluster him to the point where he starts shuffling his words. It's not making sense and all of that. Why? Because he's not going to look at the jury if he does. And the moment that he stops, if you can get him on three questions, at least three of them, where he's flustered, then you should ask him, hey, we noticed that you would talk to the jury while you were giving your statements. Why'd you stop? If he answers that, he screwed over. Why is he screwed over? Because either he's going to lie or he's going to tell the truth. If he lies, he's going to purge himself. If he purges himself, then 100% that throws out his whole entire testimony. If he admits it, then he has to admit that he's a master manipulator. Now, which one do you want to do? With that being said, right, here's a couple of things I find quite odd. He's full of shit. You mean to tell me you knew it was three people. You knew to send detectives after the damn drive. I mean, after the two that were already in the hospital and not the one who was in jail, which means that he checked out. Wouldn't that be the first one you would talk to? Because there's no way to know the conditions of the individuals. Now, you can get a dying declaration. You can do that. He probably felt like, it, I'm just giving the fake benefit of the doubt and say, hey, he probably thought, man, I don't know the extent of their injuries and who was shot and all this stuff and everything like that. But then he admits that the guy in the white was told pretty bad, which means he had to work with all to see all the injuries. Watch this, bro. Y'all gonna be like, damn, bro. I'm glad I subscribed to this channel. And if you haven't, you gonna subscribe now. You got to see two of the victims messed up. And then you knew another victim had left and went to jail. You had the disposal of running the whole entire team and telling people exactly what to do. And you decided what? That since the other guy was in jail, you couldn't and you didn't see him to damn near what? Five days later? But here's where I know he's lying. Because the wife literally said, yeah, they were telling me it was a female driver. And that you were the passenger. Now, why would you do a thing like that? Because you were manipulating the wife. You found out that man had a wife and then you got your angle. Because one thing I realize is his manipulation tactics are dope as hell. Look at this. Oh, yeah, he went for one of the three C's. What is one of the three C's? Cook food, cigarettes, and cola. Oh, man. I made that man mosey on up and shimmy on down. That's what ended up happening right there. Master manipulator. As he said in the previous clip, 
He lost people. He's done this. He's done that. And on top of that, when he caught Adrian Bean lying, you got to remember, Adrian Bean original story was to literally do what? Run around and say that we try to buy some lean. The other two had concocted a story of we got robbed. Why was he protecting Prothro, Frederick Prothro? Well, they call that man Big Fred. And Big Fred about six foot eight, six foot seven. And on top of that, he learned that one of the dudes that they allegedly did business with put a hit out on them. Now, let me ask you, who do you think would be the tougher person? If I got this dude named Big Fred six foot eight or a cat named DK and a cat named Young Thug who ain't as big and as intimidating as Big Fred and Big Fred ain't even from over there. You get with my drift? Yeah. How about me and Big Fred do exactly what I try to do and say we wasn't even a part of this. We don't know nothing about all that. That's on them. That's on them. That's why he started doing the Latella stuff because he started realizing, bruh, I might get a bond. And if I get a bond, I got to make it out on the streets. And somebody already put the word out for me on the streets that that's what we're doing. It wasn't just that he was trying to paint the illustration of throwing Young Thug and DK under the bus while snitching on the phone. No, no, no. This was a two-pronged attack. He literally try to make sure that when he got out on probation, when he thought he was going to get out on probation or bond, that he was going to go to the streets and tell it like it is. Man, Thug robbed y'all. DK robbed y'all. Buck Buck robbed y'all. Now, let's get back to the brass tacks. Your mans was full of it. He was BSing. Detective Quinn knew exactly what he was doing, and that's what he did. He let that man simmer in jail because one thing that still doesn't make sense, nigga, you have somebody who was allegedly in the drive, in the passenger seat who seen it all happen. Why would you not talk to the other individual? You have a whole entire team. You sent two people to talk to two different people. You telling me you couldn't have got a third and then you located him after you listened to jail calls? That doesn't make sense. So let me understand this. Let me Boom, turn y'all into some damn police officers, detectives, if you will. Hey, detective, while you're watching this, I want you to put your detective hat on. And your detective hat literally has to make sense of this. We know that there was an officer involved shooting that we had to take over. There are two victims are, that are shot and are in the hospital. We don't know their conditions, but I got to see that they were badly injured why don't you go check that out your next goddamn question to me would be well detective what about the other guy oh he's in jail we're not gonna worry about him we're not gonna worry about him no 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 we'll, we'll catch up to him later and that's the part where the GBI had to come in and take over the investigations because you niggas was doing stuff you weren't supposed to do because you should have sent three people out there because that cop within the first two days was able to come with a lawyer. See, they forget that part. The first day he testified when he was talking about the GBI, he literally said, oh, the cop who did the shooting came with his lawyer and then we did this and we did that and everything. And I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. My mind, I'm like, mental check that. Put that in your put that in your compartment box. But it is what it is. If Brian Steele or Keith Adams or uh, Shaw, I can't remember how to say his damn name. I just called him Shaw. If one of them cats or even the black guy, the, the, the fly uncle that, you know, he be bringing home to y'all goddamn unions with 30 year old chicks with about a kid or two, the dude over there. Yeah. If, if they, one of them don't press him like that, or if one of them don't ask the question of, Hey, when you answer your questions, why do you keep looking at the detective and Brian Steele or anybody y'all could bring that video up that I just put there, by the way. Y'all can put that video up that I just put there, by the way, that literally shows this man knows how to manipulate a jury. It's not authentic. It's not a real testimony. That's what he just did. And he admitted it plain as day. Either he has to admit, hey, bro, I was lying on there, which attacks his whole entire credibility, or I did do that, which still attacks his whole credibility as a liar. Y'all ain't going to get that nowhere else. 
Subscribe, turn on that bell, stay notified, and share to keep your people aware. If I ain't on your goddamn sub by now, you tripping. Have a blessed Sunday. I mean, Saturday, I got a dope video where I catch that goddamn judge line a bunch of times. And if you want all that stuff, like the Kendrick Lamars and all that stuff and everything like that, go subscribe to the Setty Nash Clips channel, and I'm going to start dropping there every single day, probably like every three to four hours, and we're going to get it going there, too.